Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to be my first look at Tartarus's Wrath on the new Master difficulty. I'll be sharing a couple clears in this video and giving my overall thoughts and impressions on the battle. To start, I have my first ever Deathless clear in single player, where I was using Ilya as my lead, along with Gayla Zena, Peony, and Summer Cleo. And about halfway through the video or so, I'll swap over to my first ever co-op clear, which was done in quick play, where I was using Summer Mikoto. So to start things off, let's talk about the single player variant of this fight. I did four clears of this and single player, this being my fourth clear that I'm showing, but this was my first ever deathless clear. It took me four attempts until I was able to get that deathless, mostly with some of my AI dying toward the end of my other single player runs. So this was a pretty decent challenge in single player play, it gave me a nice amount of play time, about an hour or so to get these four clears done, definitely took some practice to make happen, died to a lot of things that I probably should have been pretty well familiar with from expert difficulty, but nevertheless found to be fairly challenging. And all in all, have to say, Tartarus, probably my favorite Agito, or right up there, tied with Volk for my favorite. I just really enjoy the spectacle of this fight, and on master difficulty, I feel like the lack of Fury of the Fallen, which reduces your damage in phase one on expert difficulty, I feel like the lack of that makes it a lot more enjoyable for me as well. So I really did have a lot of fun playing through this. It was a pretty, pretty cool fight to uh, get to enjoy. There's a good amount of spectacle to it. That's something I realize I appreciate a lot with these Agito battles is when there's some flashy moves, there's some just cool attack patterns that the boss does. And one of those patterns is definitely how punishment waves works in the harder difficulty, the master difficulty that's just come out for this fight. So you can see I went into the portal to avoid it, unfortunately ended up dragoning on break, which wasn't very good, but I wasn't able to break before I got that cage on me. So I decided to go ahead and dragon, dragon just to uh, avoid getting caged. But yeah, the uh, punishment waves in this being vertical make it a lot more visually interesting to me. Not that it was uninteresting on Expert, but it feels like a fresh look. It feels like a remix, which was one of the, well, one of the things I liked less about Ciela. It just felt a little bit too samey for me and just a little bit too brute force when it came to the new difficulty of that particular Agito battle. I think Master Twins hit much better for me. So if I had to rank the different Agito battles at this point, I would say that my top tier, they're tied for first, would consist of Tartarus and Volk. My second tier would consist of the twins, and then tied for last, my third tier would consist of Kayan and Ciela. I just feel like those two are a little bit more grindy with the defensive buffs than Ciela and the need for dispel in Kayan. They both feel on the slower side and just clunkier side as far as these Agito battles, but for sure Tartarus and Volk have become my favorites. I love that we get to face off against Tartarus entirely in Phase 2 as well, because I think that his design in Phase 2 is really, really sweet. Some of his new voice lines even mention other things like Hades, which is kind of interesting because that was not something I think he mentioned on Expert Difficulty or Standard Difficulty, and between Chthonius and Tartarus and now Hades, you know, you do have to wonder, you have Elysium, are we going to get Asphodel? It might just be my brain at work because I've been playing a lot of Hades on the Nintendo Switch. But uh, Zagreus, you know, I'm here for it. Bring him to DL. That would be pretty fun. In any case, the fight is proceeding okay. This was a phase that had resulted in some deaths in past attempts when I was first practicing this. But this is the beauty of the Gold Fafnir. Excellent healing dragon, great accessibility, free to play. It's why I have 10 HP augments on my gold Fafnir for that extra healing potency. It's just a great way to go. Jokes aside, I mean, gold Fafnir is the way to make this a challenge for yourself, I feel, if you really are looking for that challenge. From what I understand, this has been autoed already. And again, we get an unfortunate break there. Just pretty bad timing on my part. Normally, I would go into this portal sooner. So I didn't realize if you don't go into this portal, I guess he starts looping those purple laser beams which uh, wasn't ideal for me during the break there, so finally had to go through the portal. But yeah, apparently this has been autoed. Makes sense that it would be easier to auto than Expert because you don't have to worry about Phase 1 and Fury of the Fallen, which is really one of the bigger impediments to autoing Expert. 
even though Expert can be autoed, it can't really be autoed reliably with Gold Fafnir's, at least not right now. Now, perhaps some of that will start to change, some of the cracks in Tartarus's armor will start to form with the new Tier 2 weapons, or should I say, with the 5th Unbind to 8th Unbind weapons and the refines that are going to be available for uh, the Light Agito weapons, maybe that'll be enough to make a difference. Looks like we got combo time and regen on them, which is just okay. It's not particularly great, nothing like attack rate, but combo time certainly welcome for those who don't have Mitsuhide. It's why I would have never really recommended investing into Fritz, for example, but some characters or some players might want to have both for comfort's sake, both the Agito weapon as well as a backliner such as Fritz or Mitsuhide. For example, with my, well, with my Ilya here, since I'm just using four unbound weapons on everybody except for a zero unbound on Gaelizena. Sometimes I do lose combo with things as they are right now. I went ahead and used the Fafnir here to get a little bit of uh, safety from that mortal chaser, but didn't have my heal quite right to protect everybody. And at this point, I was fairly familiar, pretty confident about this phase of the fight, but the problem essentially in, in solo comes when you run out of portals and you have to actually deal with the punishment waves. And uh, in general, these also, uh, those vertical lasers can be kind of difficult just because the AI are not particularly good at getting out of the way of all of those. But once again, Gold Fafnir to the rescue, get a little bit of heal action, body tank some of the punishment waves. I feel like we're pretty safe here, but usually in my past runs, this is where I would often lose an AI. Another thing that had caught me up when I was doing this in solo play is the swoop when it's purple. It did one-shot my Ilya a couple times when it was purple and I was trying to dash and effectively to get out of the way of it. So, a uh, good amount of challenge here. Pretty fun Agito battle in my opinion. A lot to say about this one as far as, uh, as my enjoyment and positivity on this one. I don't know what it is. I just feel like Tartarus, the weapons are cool. They're, they're just some of my favorite in the game. So, I think that's partially just a personal preference. I know a lot of players really like the twins and uh, like the master difficulty of those. My only real complaint or consideration as far as the twins is it feels like there's more padding. Like, you have to go through these phases of the fight where you can't damage the boss, and it's these scripted sequences that just kind of take up a lot of time. One of the things I appreciate about Volk and Kayan is there isn't really that to the same degree. There are moves that you have to dodge, like Squalls, and there are moves to dodge here, like the Chaotic Nebulas, that do essentially pad out the time a little bit, but you can still keep DPS on the boss. I feel like that just makes it more enjoyable for me personally, but yeah, Twins, right up there, it's just slightly behind those two for me. And at this point, I felt pretty sure, barring something bad happening, that I was going to get the clear here. And uh, with the HP as low as it was, I decided to try to get a 4 strike clear. When that didn't work, I figured, yep, this was the time, if there was ever any, to get the gold Fafnir clear. Try to get the gold heal on screen so you could see gold Fafnir's lovely face as I took out Tartarus. And uh, that was my first deathless single player clear of Tartarus's Wrath. So same team I used when I was showcasing Ilya and the new Manicaster weapons in a previous video. Basically just lifted that team straight up, same gold Fafnir's and all, took me around 8 minutes as you can see, got those last two endeavors, and uh, had done 3 prior clears with this team before I was able to get the deathless, so certainly not the most consistent, and it was manual, but still very fun to try nevertheless. Now when it comes to co-op, I've heard a lot about co-op as far as the different rooms that are forming and off-element strategies and everything. So I figured the most pure way to experience co-op is to do quick play. As it turns out, I didn't fit neatly into anyone else's room, so I formed my own room uh, just by default in quick play. And uh, things were looking kind of interesting here. Seeing some Mitsuba, seeing some Karina, seeing a Cupid. Honestly, very shocked to see Cupid in 2020. That's like kind of bizarre, but it's weird to have a Mitsuhide but have a Cupid, you know, because Mitsuhide hasn't been around for a while. But then the... Uh, the Mitsubas, the Karinas are leaving. I really don't know why there were that many Karinas and Mitsubas joining, but I have heard there's a fast strategy with them. But I just feel like if you're doing that strategy, just go to find a room as opposed to quick play or set up a room and set water conditions. It'll probably save you some time. But either way, I think quick play, I experienced pretty good speed here to find a team. And uh, spoiler alert, this first team that I found, my first ever attempt in co-op, it was a success, so 
didn't really have to struggle too much as far as this. Was a little bit, uh, was a little bit curious here how things were gonna go, because Summer Mikoto is a character I dream summoned, so I really wanted to get my first clear with him, but I would not say I'm very adept with Summer Mikoto. You kind of have to remember when you're playing him to continuously do your little forest strike so that you get your Celestial Wave Light and uh, Radiant or Illuminating Sunlight buffs. It's just a little bit more intensive of a character than I normally play, so constantly having to force strike and remember which of the two phases that I'm in is uh, more draining on me, and because of that, I don't think I'm really at his peak performance in DPS. And with there being another Sun Rumikoto on the team, well, I thought this had a chance to go pretty long and possibly fail when I first started this room up. I figured it likely would just because it was my first ever attempt in a completely random lobby in co-op play, and I don't think there would be anything wrong if it failed. Obviously, it is just day one of this fight, so it's a little bit early to expect people to really know what they're doing or be fully familiar with this battle. But uh, luckily, I think Gayla Zena's presence really helped this year, providing a lot of healing when any of us made mistakes. It was certainly nice to have her on the team, and uh, I think that she's a pretty good safety net if you're going in here with light comps. As I understand it, the Karina and Mitsuba comps are quite powerful as well. The great thing about Master Difficulty is you really don't need to do that many to collect all of the materials you actually need to uh, build up your weapons and get weapon bonuses and everything, so you can kind of do these at your leisure. I know when it comes to twins, like, I just did weeklies on them, I've done five a week, and that's pretty much the pace I'm going to continue to do Master Difficulty Tartarus on as well. There's not really a rush to try to get it done. Maybe we'll need some of the gear for Legend, but outside of that, well, there's not a huge impetus to uh, start doing this. So I kind of appreciate that. It's been kind of a slow period in Dragalia in general, and uh, I think that it's probably better to try pace these out because I do still think there's a good possibility that we get some double drops for the Agito that haven't had them yet. I'm not exactly expecting that to happen right away because right now with Tartarus being fresh and them having just introduced all these masters relatively quickly uh, as far as one after the other, I do think they have a little bit of time, but if we start to see you know participation in co-op rooms die down a bit, then I could see a possible solution being having on a rotating basis some of the various Agito battles on double drops as a solution to that. Maybe they could even align it with a legend release, like bring back the lower difficulties on double drop or something like that in the lead up to prepare people, but uh, yeah, I could kind of see that happening at this point since they have sort of uh, done it for two of the Agito but not the others. The fact that they did it for Volk and Kayan, and a lot of people just got all of the materials they needed but are way behind on rupees means unfortunately a lot of players just aren't doing those trials anymore and with uh, Kayan and Ciela and now the twins being relatively easy to auto, some of the concerns I've seen expressed about uh, those fights as well as now Tartarus on the master difficulty is that although it's great for players who enjoy solo and enjoy auto, I have seen some players a little bit concerned that because the solo and auto is on the easier side, it's not easy to find players in public lobbies because a lot of the players just finish it off, get all the materials they need doing auto or doing solo play, and then the lobbies are a little bit more dead. And then that gets compounded when you consider things like half of the player base wanting to use Karina and Mitsuba and the other half wanting to use light units or perhaps something else. I don't know if there's still any, you know, possibility of Hawk and Gala Alex at the expert difficulty or not, but that was a thing for a while. So uh, I could see that being a concern. One way around that I think would be to have something like double drops to kind of concentrate the player base a little bit more when uh, there starts to be a dwindling in the amount of players that are available. But as of day one, it doesn't seem to be a huge concern. As you can see, I was able to find a room pretty quickly, no conditions, completely randomly, and then it ended up clearing. So I think it's also just a lot about random chance and random luck, unless you're willing to use an option like a Discord or like your Alliance to play with players you know and want to use the same strategy that you do. So if you uh, need to find players of that type, I would encourage you to check out the Discord. The link is in the description below. You can find players wanting to do all sorts of different things. If you'd like to join a larger Discord, there is a large Discord that's associated with the game's subreddit, which I think is probably the biggest available for the game. 
And as I understand it, they have looking for group rooms and rooms for all of the endgame content. In some cases, that is probably going to be your best bet just because of the large population of players that are there if you're really looking to group up and do a particular strategy. Now, I do think some of this will fade over time though. It is just day one. One of the things that uh, you see all the time with endgame content on day one is like a whole host of complaints, but in opposite directions. Like some people are like, it's too easy. Some people are like, why is it so hard? Others are like, uh, you know, I want to do it in this way or I want to do it that way. And at the end of the day, I feel like it kind of just met my expectations. And overall, I was pretty happy with it. Like it's, it's a pretty cool fight. It's pretty well designed. There's some neat mechanics. There's some neat twists on old mechanics. And I don't really have a lot negative to say about it. But if you are feeling a little frustrated or disappointed with it, I would still be curious to hear your take on things in the comments below. I want to get a little bit more insight into that perspective and that side of things as well. And just to hear out what uh, some of the player concerns are, what they like to see with Legend, that I'm very curious about. Certainly seen a lot of players unhappy with the Karina Mitsuba prevalence. And for me, I just feel like I don't really have to participate in that. It doesn't really hurt me that others are participating in it. But part of the reason for that is I was pretty fortunate to get some quick runs in co-op and quick play. And I'm not like out here trying to grind this all in day one. You know, I'm going to do this is basically my only clear I'm going to do this week in co-op because now I've done my five weeklies and then I'll pick this up at a later time. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of ride it out, see how it goes. That was my first ever clear in co-op play. Sorry, Gayla Zena, for letting you die. Probably my bad Mikoto rotations. We could have cleared a while earlier and you would have survived. Always have to think about your own role when others make mistakes, and I definitely think I killed Gayla Zena there. In any case, that is going to do it for this video, everyone. Had a lot of fun checking out Tardis' Wrath. Gonna get back to some Hades, gonna get back to some Dragalia Lost, and just kind of ride things out, see what comes with the next banner. Thank you, as always, for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time.